If there's one area of our lives that we're always going to be tested in, it's in the area of our faith. I mean, the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. It makes sense that the enemy will always attack that one area that pleases God, our faith. You see, the enemy is not after your kids. It's not after your husband or your wife. He's not after your job or your finances. He's after your faith. There's nothing he could do with those things. Those are just manifestations, right? But the one thing he goes after, really, at the root of it, it's our faith he's attacking. Our faith in God. Our faith in what we believe at the core of our hearts, of who God is. And you read the Bible from cover to cover, you realize that there is no one single person that God used that wasn't tested in the area of faith. And it's almost like the greater they were used by God, the greater they were tested in the area of their faith. And then we have a chapter in the book of Hebrews 11 that has a whole hall of fame for faith. You know, it says, by faith, Sarah received strength to conceive. By faith, Abraham offered up Isaac. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God, and so on and so forth. And that's one thing that God is always interested in our lives. He's always looking for ways to expand our faith, to strengthen our faith. And that's why it always feels like you just never can catch a break. You know, you just get over one thing and then there's the next thing. You get over the other thing and then there's the next thing. You know, God doesn't want us to ever come to a place of complacency where we just say, you know what, I've settled and I've apprehended and I've got this walk all figured out. No, there's always room for your faith to grow. And God is so wise because he knows exactly what you can handle and what you can't handle. If he gave me some of the things I, I, I went through in my year eight in God, if he gave me those very same things in year two or year one of serving God, listen, I don't think I could have made it. I'm telling you that right now. He doesn't just throw everything at us at once, right? You remember when you got saved, it, it kind of felt like you could do anything. And if God told you to just do anything, you would just jump and do it. But the more you got in God, you realize that, man, like this is not so, easy like this is not so you know that honeymoon feeling wasn't wasn't always there right because he wants to take us from a level of faith to a higher level of faith to one level of glory to a higher level of glory and he knows exactly when to turn up the heat he knows exactly when to increase the fire so that it doesn't burn us yet it challenges us to step up to the plate. And there's a story in the Bible that very well illustrates what we're talking about today. It's the story of Elijah and the widow of Zarephath. You know, Elijah was a mighty prophet of God and he was journeying in the wilderness, just doing the will of God. You know, naturally he got hungry and the Lord sent a raven to him with bread and he drank water from a brook, but the brook dried up and he didn't have food anymore. And the Lord told him something really crazy. And so God told Elijah, you know, go to Zarephath. There's going to be a woman there and she will provide food for you. Elijah said, cool, you know, sure, let's do it. And so he goes to Zarephath. He sees the woman that God said will provide him food. And he said, you know what, ma'am, can you please get me a glass of water? And oh, while you add it, can you please bring me a morsel of bread? And then she says, um, you know what, I don't have bread. I really only have this much flour, fistful, and I'm about to eat it and die with my son. Whoa. Well, like, first, first, first and foremost, why would God tell Elijah, of all the people in Zarephath, all the wealthy people, all, you know, the middle class people, whatever, why would he tell him to go to the one lady who's broke, broke, broke to the point of death, about to cook her last meal and die. Why would God tell him that? Because God wants to increase our faith. And that's the thing about faith. Faith is all about God. And we want certainty. You know, we want assurance. We want proof. We want details. And all of that stuff is about us. It's about our self-protection. -protect it's all about our, our, our self-preservation. Um, but faith is all about God. Faith is so vulnerable. It makes us weak, but we are strong in God. Faith makes us strong in God, 
but weak in our flesh. And you know what? Reasoning is such an enemy of faith. When you want to start getting all the, 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 the parts to it and want to figure it out in your mind, it's such an enemy of faith. Because look at this situation. How, must, how did that make um, um, Elijah feel for an onlooker, from someone looking from the outside? Bro, you mean you're about to take a woman's last meal? Nah, bro. Nah, bro. That's low, man. That, 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 that's low. And there's areas of your life where God will require faith and obedience where it's going to look so silly for everyone else. It's going to look low. I mean, for, for, for even Elijah to say, like, I'm about to eat a woman's last meal. She's about to die. I'm about to eat her last meal. But Elijah understood something. He understood that it's no longer about him. It's no longer about you and I. It's all about God. It's no longer about, about, about what people think of this situation. But compared to my obedience to God, my obedience to God is most important. My reasoning has to go to the ground. My, my, my thoughts and, and my ideas on this must make sense before I take a step. If it has to make sense before you take a step, you really never do anything for God. I assure you that. And you know, we always ask God, increase my faith. You know, I want to have faith. But you know what happens? When he presents us with the situations that are tailor-made, to increase my faith and make me grow in him, we back out. We say, ah, nah, bro, not like that. I didn't, I, I don't want it like that. Because the situations that are set up to increase our faith will never look favorable, never. And this story about Elijah and the widow of Zarephath is so fascinating because to make matters worse, there is famine in the land. There's no water, there's nothing. And Elijah's asking this woman for her very last meal. And Elijah says, you know what? Go bake that meal anyways. Just go make it and let's see what God does. And Elijah prophesied upon that woman's life that you will not run out of flour or any food until the day the Lord sends rain. And this woman obeyed and it happened that she did not run out of anything. And that's the thing about faith. If you want to see miracles in your life, if you want to see, 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 see the supernatural in your life, because that's the only one thing that separates us with everybody else. That's the only one thing that's going to separate you from the crowd is your faith. And if you want to see the supernatural, you must learn to obey God even when it doesn't make any sense. And what you're doing when you do that is you're putting God on the line. You're saying, God, it's out of my control and I'm giving it, I'm putting it in your hands. And I'm going to obey you at any cost and watch God step in for you because it's impossible to please him. Faith touches his heart. It's impossible to please him without faith.